Okay, I've handed it over to Kevin. Okay, Kevin, we're going to start digging into this a little more uh, because people want to see how this stuff works. We also want to get across, people are asking, you know, uh, when you talk about context or situational, uh, give us an example of what that means. And I think this will be a good example because we're looking at information, that a lot of the same information, but we're looking at it from different views or different contexts. Right. So um, that that's exactly, um, you know, what's great about uh, the flexibility of our platform is that essentially, you know, you could have data coming from the different data centers um, relating to metrics. You could have data relating to trouble tickets, um, you know, potentially tied to these data centers and other application servers you have out there. Um, and we give you the, the flexibility to connect to all those sources really quickly and then visualize and solve those problems in different ways. So whereas here you see sort of a top-down look into the data center, I um, I can pull up my, my app servers that are also um, scattered around the country, and now I've provided a different view into them so that when I click on one of them, it's actually going to show me um, different projects associated that are happening on that application server visualized in a different way. So this, from a perspective of how customers use this, they typically the IT operations guys and the performance guys, some are looking at the big view of the data centers, how they're performing. There's guys who are looking at app servers and the different servers and systems that are running. And to be able to log into the system and get the views you want, and some, some organizations and many, they're looking across all of these and they're switching back the context. To be able to look at how your, your servers are uh, running over time and how they're running now, and then also be able to pull in things like trouble tickets, which in a different system, and also look at what's happening from a project perspective. These are all disparate data sources that will never be integrated together. Uh, so, but this is the type of information that these, these operations people need. They need to look at this in context, and ultimately, they want to be able to report on this to management. Exactly. And, and one other thing important to note around all this is because we always know the context of the user because of our flexible uh, security architecture, we're only going to be exposing the information that a certain knowledge worker is permission to see. So as an executive, John might see a different view of that information as opposed to me, who might see a more technically driven um, view of that enterprise data. Now, if I have a, just to drill the point here, now I'm looking at projects, I'm looking at trouble tickets. Uh, if I wanted to look at um, essentially my scorecard on my performance over the last year, I would be able to have add that as an app to this view here. Absolutely, um, and I sort I decided that I wanted to visualize some of these uh, data elements on a map, and you know, coming in here to our third tab, we can now plot all of our data centers. We can plot some of our business units and we can plot some of our offices on the map. And now based upon which, one of, which ones I click on, I can now see that different scorecard. So for example, um, you know, this server has uh, specific you know, performance indicators. And then when I click on this one, it will reveal a, uh, a different scorecard. Now you could, if you wanted to, those scorecards are roll up from historical information. Also, you can be looking at it now. You would be able to click on those and drill down to the different systems that are reporting that, ultimately drill down as far as you need to go. Is that right? Exactly. And, and on top of that, you could take historical snapshots with one click of a button using our uh, platform and store that information off to provide some sort of historical roll up of all these metrics. And I think that's a key point, and I, I don't want people to miss that. So the, as we talk about historical information and we talk about, um, and a lot of these systems are plugged into BI systems that provide that historical information, there are a lot of more real-time systems that don't give you access to the historical information. So we're able to take these snapshots at any point in time and even schedule them. So as you're getting real-time information in, you can take that information and snapshot it so that you can essentially have a playback button uh, and look not only at performance that you have now over the past, but play through uh, the, the different performance or information that you have over time. And I think that is a really, it's a subtle thing that you may miss in a real-time system, but it's very, very key 
because real-time systems aren't designed to give you historical information. But if you tap to that information, you can use it as both a historical performance and a playback capability. Correct. Um, and then one other thing to point out, because we talked about it earlier in the presentation, is that sharing out one of these apps is as easy as grabbing the script tag. So, you know, anyone that's familiar with YouTube has, has seen something like this before. You can just drop this tag into any web page, portal, so on and so forth, as well as this can be pushed onto mobile, SharePoint, other destinations. Okay, so the chat, um, the questions just lit up. People are saying, well, wait, so if I do this, does this automatically become non-secure because I pass out this script tag to everyone? Absolutely not. Our system will look for, you know, that authentication. So if, if it's not provided in the context in which it's viewed, then it's going to cue you to authenticate. So when you, this is delivered, as soon as that script tag is hit uh, in your web page or portal, SharePoint, mobile device, it's delivering it, it's contacting your server and, and authenticating you and then making sure you're authorized and running through that whole thing, delivers the app, and this happens across any of the data you're accessing to, goes through all the policies and authorization? Exactly. So if we viewed this in SharePoint and we had integrated with the NTLM authentication, it would be a single sign-on type of user experience. If it was viewed in iGoogle outside of the enterprise, you know, that, that wouldn't be the case. It would actually require authentication to view. So with this script tag, and I know that you also have just the URL that uh, you could send out, you could essentially send this out to managers and say, you know, stop asking me for reports. Just go put this on your desktop or in your web page somewhere and um, and just see it as it's happening. Absolutely. And okay. once again, one click of a button. Great. Okay, cool. What next? So how some of this stuff was assembled, you know, we wanted to dive underneath the covers a little bit and at the same time keep it very high level. So on the data side, if you think about um, John describing everything as a block and being reusable, this is what, you know, a typical uh, data mashup could look like. And essentially, if you go through the different blocks, you have different information sources, such as server metrics, as well as metrics coming from Remedy. We're joining them together, transforming the data, and filtering the data. So it's not even important to understand all of the different steps involved here. What's really important to take away is that this mashup, if I've created it, the next time John wants to use something like this, this combination of eight different blocks is now considered one block to in, in our situation. So to put it in the context where people can understand the app, this is, this is kind of the magic in going and getting, wiring the data together to pull it from different systems as Remedy and, and your app server metric system being able to put it together, transform it the way you want, filter it the way you want. And that, this is the information, that real-time information you're ultimately pushing to the apps, right? Exactly. And so you want to talk about, um, you know, business, business user empowerment. You know, you're dragging these things out onto a canvas and wiring them together. And if you, when you click on these, you're, it's going out to that source and getting the real information. Yeah, it, it's making the call in real time. So can you click on the blocks there and just show the different blocks that you have available? Sure, and these are kind of the different data operations that um, you know we can support here, and they're about 80 out of the box. And keep in mind, this is just our visual mashup composer. And uh, all of these blocks are developer extensible, so as the requirements for the different operations to be performed on the data change, you can publish in a new block as a macro, and essentially it will become available to all the different business power users in your enterprise. Why don't you scroll down? Do you have, uh, you have SharePoint blocks in there? Sure. So SharePoint is uh, part of our, our platform, too. We have a um, product uh, called Mashup Sites for SharePoint, and it, it essentially makes SharePoint a first-class citizen when it comes to uh, information. You can see that the SharePoint list there is something that uh, Kevin just brought out as a data source. Well, that can talk to any SharePoint list on any SharePoint server that has our plugin and it'll get you information back and also allow you to push information back into SharePoint. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, SharePoint or other types of ERP systems. We, once they're registered into the system once, we can reuse that information and build these mashups and build the real-time app on top of this. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, and what that looks like a little bit is uh, coming in here to our, our one of our app assembly tools. It, it's a similar paradigm, right? You're, you're laying out your workspace, how, how you 
you want to configure it. You're dragging and dropping the different apps. So, and this is uh, Matchboard where you, you know, part of the product that you went and pulled in these apps, and this is how you wired them together to get them to talk to each other? Exactly. So, for example, if you think back to, you know, when I click on one of these, um, one of these data centers, it's going to show me those metrics that's configured here, and it's, it's the typical publisher subscriber type of paradigm where I can select which of these apps is going to listen for events. I select the publishing event, which is going to be some type of click or scroll or whatever that may be, and then I can essentially uh, map that data. And, you know, in this case, I'm essentially passing the provider of one of my data centers. Now, the real power in this is that uh, by creating these individual apps, you can have an analyst or a knowledge worker or a power user go and take these things and wire them together by saying, when I click on this, send that data to my other one. So all of a sudden, you have four independent apps that are now connected. Exactly. So if you think back to the wires versus Mashboard, we're really empowering business users on two different levels. If a business user does have expertise on the data side, they can use wires to visually reach into those systems and you know, compose that enterprise data. If they're maybe not that savvy, then they can come, they can still come into Mashboard and say, look at all these apps, I want to assemble these and build my own dashboard and view all of this stuff in context. And the collaboration side here and where this is moving to is that if you have, you know, lists of users up there that you're collaborating with, uh, you could go and drag these apps onto them and, and allow them to go and collaborate with you uh, such as you're showing here, as some people are asking you if you can actually see their faces. Um, you can look, you can customize a person to look uh, like whatever you want. But even though it looks very web to low consumer centric, there's a lot of security and governance that's happening underneath it all. Uh, you you may be showing people up here, but all these people are authorized and are being authorized on the fly. So if all of a sudden Jack up there or Brian, I go and I change a permission on them, and you share something with them, uh, they're not going to get access to it. Uh, so the goal is to leverage the technology and to leverage the security and governance we have underneath to give the same experience that you have on the consumer side and the tooling uh, so that you can do some of the things that we're, we're used to on the consumer side. Okay, so I want to...